G'day fellas, welcome to another video on the improvement checklist where we're going to be taking a look at the Japanese standard opening. The Japanese standard opening is a little bit different from most other civilizations just because it's very, very micro intensive at the beginning. So there's a couple of things that we're going to be doing. I'm going to list them all for you. The first thing that we're going to be doing, moving our villagers over to food. Now keep in mind, they do that automatically, but we like to just normally move them over a little bit faster so that they get their, their feet moving a little bit faster. Second thing that we're going to be doing is sending both of our explorers out roughly in a similar direction. So maybe one arc up this way, maybe one arc across this way. Third thing that we're going to be doing is putting one of our cherry orchid rickshaws down onto the back of the ground. Now, if you're on a map that's got berries, you're not going to need to do that. You're going to leave your cherry orchid rickshaw up. And the fourth thing that we're going to be doing is moving this orchid rickshaw out and about like our explorers as well. But he can sort of just go off on his own. So let's get to it. Before we do though, I just want to let you guys know this is a 4K video. All content on this channel is now going to be uploaded in 4K. So even if you're not watching on a 4K device, it's going to be looking absolutely crystal clear for you. Let's get into it. All right, villagers over. Explorer one, Explorer two, you get dropped down. You're going to get tasked out. Now I'm going to queue up my villager. There we go. Sending through my villagers and moving some villagers over onto wood because we need to get our consulate down quick smart. So we're going to send out our explorers, as I mentioned, in this roughly the same direction. So we've got 75 coin up here. Not too bad. Not too bad of a start at all. Uh, we've also got a 70 coin, so we might come over and grab that. Uh, so we're going to be dropping down our consulate with two villagers. So those two villagers right there. And this villager is going to be used to gather up our wood. So we need to get that seven wood during our transition period. All right, you keep you keep going, Cherry Orchid Rickshaw. All right, and so we're just going to leave that uh, that treasure. We're not going to pick that one up. So the seven wood, we've got it now. Move our explorer or our our villager over. Keep in mind, we're not gathering up that coin crate. We don't actually need that coin crate just yet. And just microing back with our explorers. Feel free to, to use your stuns at any point. You don't want to overuse your stuns, though. That's that's a, another thing. Uh, don't overuse the stuns. And now we're, we're going to be dropping down our shrine. Uh, so we're going to ally it with the Portuguese. So we would have picked up the, this coin. So already picking up quite a significant amount of resources. We'll pick our land deck. We're going to be going with Heavenly Kami. So dropping down that shrine. There it goes now. So 107, or I think it's 106, actually, that, that you need. Uh, so we'll take a look at our rickshaw, see how he's doing. So you can see all of this area that's been scattered out by the rickshaw doing absolute work. So that, that shrine now getting dropped down up here to the north of the map. So we've done a little bit of a, a sneaky thing here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you guys something. Uh, it, it's advisable, but inadvisable as well. So uh, we're going to be abusing the mechanics of the game uh, to try and achieve a little bit of a result here. And I'll explain more about that. So... What we're going to continue doing is we're scouting out the map. Now, keep in mind, with your Orchid Rickshaw, you don't actually need this guy until, like, probably, oh, I don't know, maybe another six or seven minutes. You can rely, essentially, on the, this uh, Orchid or this, this Cherry Blossom for at least the first five to six minutes. You're not going to have any problems at all. So you can keep this guy out and scouting. If your opponent starts to snare him and, and you know, at attack it, you probably want to bring it back. Like, right there, we see an Explorer. I'm, I'm just going to move away from the Explorer, even though we're only playing against an AI. You know, I, I want to avoid that at all costs. Now, with the Portuguese... Uh, and so we'll bring him back and, and we'll turn him into a, an, a Cherry Orchid. So with the, the Portuguese consulate here, it's going to reduce the cost of all your buildings. And that includes your age up buildings. So to age up as the Japanese, you need 680 food. So what we're going to do is we're going to send a villager out over here. We're going to idle for a little bit here. That's all right, though. So this villager here. So this shrine here is going to tie this hunt down and prevent it from moving anywhere. Okay, so by putting this by putting this shrine here, we have actually stopped that hunt from moving. In the, in the definitive edition, you guys will notice that shrines typically move really uh, not shrines, uh, 
hunts move very, very, very far, and they do it very, very quickly. Uh, and so, what you can do is if you actually put a, sh a shrine on one of your starting hunts, you can see it's not moving away from the Toshogu shrine when normally it should be because it's being held down by this shrine here, which means we're going to be able to collect one, two, three, four, five, six animals for it. So, let's talk more about the beginning, the opening, what we're up to. So, we've shipped in Heavenly Kami, 75 wood a shrine. So, now we're going to start shrining up our opponent's side of the map first. Really, really important. Don't shrine your own side of the map first. Always go for your opponent's side first. Our, our rickshaw has come back, so we might just drop him down outside our base now. So, in the transition period, we've, we've moved our, or we should have moved our shrines over to wood. Um, and, and that hasn't happened because we're uh, we're not the best players at the game, uh, but that's okay. Uh, and so our villagers all move over to wood, except for six. We keep six that are on berries in the transition period. We, we've got that extra shipment. We're not going to use that. Uh, once we age up, we're going to be using that shipment. So now in the transition period, continuing to drop down shrines uh, around our opponent's base. So the idea is that our opponent is going to have to address these shrines at some point. If they want to come out here and eventually, you know, drop down something like a a a, uh, a castle or something and, and to, to try and pick up resources from this, they're going to need to destroy these first. So that's the idea behind it. That's what we want to do. And in the meantime, we're just continuing at this point to train villagers. You can see we're, we've got a little bit of a late age up here because we haven't picked up any early treasures. Typically, we're going for those treasures. So first card in is going to be that 600 wood. So dropping down more and more shrines as we continue. So remember, we, we want to be sieging up our opponent's side and then move... Or sieging. Uh, we want to be uh, shrining up our opponent's side and then moving back over this way, over that way. That's ideally what you want to be doing. Now we can drop a market down as well now that we've, we've reached the age up. And with that, we're going to send four villagers behind this. So this is a very greedy build, a very... Uh, a, a build order that's really focused on, on being as greedy as possible in the early game. Uh, and so now we're going to be dropping down our barracks. So we'll drop the barracks down behind our town center in a safer position and begin moving our villagers over onto onto food. And so from, from this position, we are researching our upgrades from the market. So we're getting both of our food upgrades now. We're keeping our shrines on wood and we're going to continue shrining. So we're still dropping those shrines down in all those annoying spots that our opponent normally would want to be. And now our very first uh, barracks is up. So we transition over to coin from here on our on our shrines. I was going to say on our torps, but you guys know that uh, I, I can't say that. We're, we're not playing Sweden, but it just comes so naturally. Continuing to shrine up. So we're at 6 minutes 20 at the moment. 120 population uh, for, for shrines. It's not too bad. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. And so now we can begin to create Ashigaru Musketeers with that first batch now underway. We're going to start and drop down our... Uh, second barracks. This is going to enable us to really start getting those Ashigaru pump pumping out. The idea is that we want to try and maximize our shrine population as quickly as possible. So you can see that we we were stacking up quite a fair bit there of resources, but uh, we're uh, we're able to to use it all eventually. The opponent actually killing a fair few bison out here, doing it. A bit of an interesting job, I'll say that much. And you, you'll see that now we've got our, our two barracks up, so we'll begin training units out of two barracks. We're going to drop down our, or ship in our second lot of four villages here. And just be very cognizant of your macro. If, if you've got a... Um, if you've got a little bit too more, much of, of one resource, then you can, you know, feel free to switch it around in the shrines. It's definitely not too difficult to do that. Uh, and so now, continuing to add more and more Ashigaru Musketeers and continuing to add more and more settlers over here. Uh, and so, once again, more mu Musketeers. So we got out a batch here of eight Musketeers. Really, really decent considering we're at, at 7 minutes 40 here. Uh, we're at 120, sh 180 Shrine population. So continuing to add Shrines around the map. We're almost at max Shrine pop. And then from here, there's a, a lot of different options that you can do. Whether you want to look for a Fortress Age play by sending 600 coin after this, whether you want to stick to the Second Age and you want to fight it out by shipping Ashigaru Musketeer Attack. Alternatively, you can just send in the Daimyo Motodata and you can go for a sort of timing push. Eventually, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be moving off the Portuguese Consulate so you can take the Portuguese Expeditionary Company, which is going to give you a whole bunch of, of crossbows. Or, uh, and, and then from there, you can transition 
uh, across to uh, the Japanese isolationist consulate. So what we'll do here is we'll t we'll go with the Demu Mod Modadada, making sure that we continue shrining up. So this is going to be our final shrine here. So ideally, we want to finish shrining just bef just as we're ending our uh, our relations. We've now picked up our Bastiroids as well. So we've got quite a decent mass of infantry at the moment. And then from here, we can continue massing up from behind. We're sending in our motor data and we can do some sort of timing attack here. Normally, you wouldn't do this. Normally, you would go for a more uh, economic approach. So potentially sending in that 600 coin and then going up to the third age. Because if you're going to send in the motor data, normally you'd be a bit more aggressive in, in the second age early on instead of sending in back-to-back -back four villages. Other than that, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video in, and this look at the Japanese stand build order. Keep in mind, you can do this on land and water maps. On a water map, the only difference is that you could send, instead of opening Heavenly Kami, just send three fishing boats. That's it. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, I encourage you to leave a like. If, you're, uh, if, you, if you think that I've missed something, leave a comment and I'll catch you guys in the next one.